To another episode of the Cushman Restoration Project. Today we're going to be talking about the front fender. So ideally we want to replace we want to replace as many, few parts as possible and keep it as original as possible. However when I took this fender off to see what we were getting into there's a big piece of it missing due to rust. Um, otherwise the fender's okay. The mount hole on the top's a little bent and stretched out. And the hole on the other side is fine, but I can't fix that. So instead what we did is we bought a brand new fender from Dennis Carpenter Cushman Parts. So this is a brand new fender. This is the exact one that it's supposed to be. A um, few things that you'll notice. One, it's not covered in rust and paint. Um, but it doesn't have the mounting holes for the fork. So we're gonna have to put in those mounting holes. Also, what we're going to need to do is in shipping, there's a little dent right there. And we're gonna have to get rid of that somehow. There's a couple ways we can do that, but we're going to start with the easiest way first and see if we just can't tap it out a little bit with a hammer. So that's what we're going to try to do. Then we're going to locate the holes, drill them, clean it up, sand it, prime it, sand it, paint it, sand it, clear coat it, sand it, buff it, and get it looking good. So we're going to do this paint job entirely with rattle cans and see how it turns out. So first, let's sort out that dent. Okay, so there's a right way and a wrong way to do this with a hammer. What we're going to do is actually the wrong way. The right way would be to get what's called a hammer and dolly and uh, do it using that, which is basically hammering against a metal plate on the other side of the sheet metal, that's the dolly, in order to get the shape that you want. Now, this is such a small repair, I'm not really ready to commit to go buy a hammer and dolly set. We'll probably need one further down the road, but for this, I think we'll be okay. I specifically found the smallest hammer that I have, and it's got a rounded end on it. So that's gonna help me get that dent flattened out without actually flattening out the curve of the fender. So, this is not a test of strength. You should not get on here and beat the heck out of it. What you want to do is very lightly tap it against the surface and see if you can't start to work that out. If you get too aggressive with it, what's going to happen is you're going to um, flatten out the spot. So what you want to try to do is try to keep it as round as possible. It's already quite a bit better and it's just going to take a little bit more work like that and we'll slowly get it beat out. And that's it, the dent's removed. It actually worked really well. You can still see a little scratch there from whatever caused the dent, but hopefully primer will, uh, will hide that crime. So um, next step is we're gonna have to drill the, find a way to set up these uh, side holes. And to do that, we're gonna have to mount it using the top hole on the scooter and start getting lined up. So let's do that. Okay, so we tapped the holes into the side after a test fit. Now, whether you're building this or anything else, make sure you test fit as often as possible. Um, there, there's some issues with the fenders rubbing against the body. There's a lot of little tweaks that you have to make before you drill the holes. So test fit as often as possible. But now that we have the holes drilled, it's time to get this thing ready to be primered. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna give it a wipe down. 
um, and get it good and clean. You can see here we've got some rust spots. It's probably covered in a grease too from the shipping, from the manufacturing process and who knows what it picked up in shipping. So we gotta get this thing clean. So what I picked up for the cleaning was this uh, product called Prep All. It's uh, for, it's specifically built for cleaning up metal before you primer. Now you can also use, I've heard, white vinegar and water to a one to four one to three, one to four ratio of vinegar to water. But I was already at the auto parts store and buying stuff, so just want to spray it on liberally and then let it sit for a minute. It smells a little spray painty. Let it sit for uh, one minute and then wipe it off. Okay, now we're going to wipe it off. And this should remove any grease, mildew, I mean not mildew, but there shouldn't be any mildew on it. But it's going to remove all of those chemicals that are on here from manufacturing to make a nice clean spot for uh, the primer to adhere to. Again, we got to let that sit. All right. So we're just going to give it one last rub down. There we go, nice and clean. Now we're gonna clean it one more time, but before we do that, we're going to need to rough it up a little bit to give the paint somewhere to adhere. So we're just gonna rub it down real fast. I have a 220 grit sandpaper. I don't know if that's going to be coarse enough, but we'll see how it does. Yeah, that's fun. And you just want to give it a once over. Remember, you're not trying to remove material as much as you're just trying to scuff the surface. Definitely not as smooth as it once was. Um, I do have a minor problem in here where there's some burrs from when I drilled out. So we're going to have to get a file to knock that down. See what we can do about it. Yeah, see, it's got little bits of the sandpaper. Much better, much better. Okay, so again, let's get off the debris that from the sanding. Yeah, it's definitely you can feel that it's more coarse than it was. Okay. Now, now that we're good and clean, let's get set up for primer. Okay, so primer is going to be done exactly as we've done in the past. Start with a nice light coat. Just to give the subsequent coats of primer something to adhere to. And we're gonna let that nice light coat dry for about five minutes and then we'll come back again. And now we're gonna go back and we're gonna do another coat now that it's dried. We're gonna do a more solid coat. 
not as light. We want to try to hit everything, but we don't want to put it on so heavy that it runs. So I'm going to start putting more and more coats on here. And then um, once we have a good solid coat of primer, we'll go to the next step, which is going to be sanding. Okay, now that we have let the primer cure, it's been sitting here for about 24 hours. Um, I feel like it's safe for us to go ahead and start sanding it to get that smooth surface before we start painting. Uh, we're going to be using 800 grit sandpaper. Uh, wetter, it's, this is wet or dry paper, but we're going to be using it wet. And we have here water with a little bit of soap in it. I know it looks like a lot of soap, but it's actually just a little bit of soap. Um, it's still a little agitated from when I poured the water in there. So that's what we're going to do. Now, just as a show me, uh, I am not going to do any prep to the inside. Uh, the inside of the fender is just going to be uh, spray painted and cleared with no sanding. So we'll be able to see the real difference that sanding makes. I'm okay with under here being a little sloppy, A, because it's not visible, and B, the thicker levels of paint are gonna go further to protect it, so I don't have to worry about the paint coming off and it's starting to rust underneath. So, we're gonna get started with wet sanding. So to do that, we're going to take sandpaper, get it good and wet, get some water on the surface here, and just kind of lightly sand. One way and then the other, just to try to minimize the amount of lines. Now the soap definitely makes it slide really easy. Um, you make sure your surface is always good and wet. And it's really getting, uh, you can just tell the difference as you're sanding in what your, uh, in your outcome. You don't want to go in swirls. Um, here it's not as important. You definitely don't want to go in swirls on your final paint when we're wet sanding there because what that'll do is it creates swirl patterns and your buffer, which we'll do at the very end, moves in a swirl pattern as well. So it makes it hard so you, to, for it to remove those swirl patterns because they're both moving in a circle. Where what you can do here is do a 45 one way, 45 the other, 45 one way, 45 the other, and just sand down and you'll feel it start to get slick. Now, you want to be careful because you don't want to go all the way through the paint. Because um, then you're going to have to put more primer on. But, you definitely want to make sure that you get all of it sanded. So, uh, you just got to keep up with it a little bit. Don't get too aggressive. Take your time and get a nice clean sand. Now that the sanding's done, we're going to wipe it down with some alcohol just to get the surface good and clean. Um, I'm going to use, you could use acetone, you could use just about anything, but this is what I have handy, which is alcohol wipes. And you're just trying to get all of that sanding off, sanding dust off, um, so that it doesn't cause problems with your paint. Um, I've already given it a kind of a quick rinse. So this is just the final step of getting the surface clean so the paint has something to adhere to. And you can see there's a lot of debris that's coming up with it. So you just want to make sure you're good and thorough. As we get this good and cleaned up, we'll be ready to start with paint. Now that we have a nice, clean surface for the paint to adhere to, we're going to start painting it. Now we're going to do a nice light coat at first, just like we did before with the primer. Just a nice, 
light coats. Just to give us something for the next layer to adhere to. I'm going to let that dry for 5-10 minutes and then we're going to come back again and do a heavier coat. Okay, so we've let this dry for about 5-10 to 10 minutes. Now we're just going to do a full true coat. If anybody's actually wondering what I'm using, it's the Rust-Oleum. It is uh, Maui Blue. I've used it before on a couple of projects. I really like the color. I don't know how it's going to look for a whole scooter, but what the heck, right? So go back in with a little bit heavier coat, not too heavy, because we're going to want to do a bunch of coats so that way when we get around to doing the wet sanding on this, that um, we don't sand through the paint. So we're going to do many coats. It's going to, you're going to want to go in a hurry, but don't. Um, drips are your enemy. Too heavy of coats are your enemy. Um, they take a long time to dry, especially when you're painting and not a enclosed booth. It gives plenty of opportunity for some sort of debris to get on there and sticky it and get stuck to the paint. Um, so don't get in a hurry. Uh, take your time, do several coats. And then um, if it starts to look like you've got, uh, you know, a lot of this is going to be taken care of with the wet sanding. And a lot of the gloss is going to be taken care of with the clear coat. So don't get in a hurry. So I'm going to keep putting coats on this. And then we'll go back and uh, once, once it's all coated up and dried up, we'll start talking about the wet sanding and clear coating process. After several coats of paint and a lot of drying time, we're now ready to go to the next step. Now this has been drying for about a week and a half, two weeks, just because I haven't had a chance to get back to it. Um, you don't obviously have to let it dry for that long, but that's how long I let mine dry for. So uh, you just want to make sure that it's fully dry so that when you start sanding into it, you don't find uh, spots that are still wet. So here's where we're going to start. We're going to start with some 800 grit sandpaper. We're going to get it wet just like we did before with a little detergent and water. And we're just going to start sanding. Just take your time, make sure it stays good and wet so that way you've got the appropriate amount of slide and you're just going to keep sanding it with this 800 grit sandpaper. Make sure you vary up a little bit your direction, 45 and 45. Um, and also change your hands and position a little bit just so you don't rub in portions from the pressure that you're putting on your hands. But you can see I've got blue stuff coming off. So we're going to finish this step and then we'll move to the next one. Now that the 800 grit is done, we're going to move to 2000 grit. Same thing, soap and water and just go after. Now it's already feeling a lot slicker meaning that we got out all those little bumps and stuff that make it look like an orange peel. You know, that's why they call it orange peel. And it's just really getting nice and glassy. Now it's not going to be as glossy as it was as raw paint because we're scuffing up the surface, but that's okay because the clear coat is going to take care of the gloss. Right now we're just trying to give just the, a nice smooth surface for the clear coat to do its magic on. Now, after sanding and drying it off, it's time for the clear coat. So I've got it up off the table. We're going to hit it with some clear coat. Now, again, I'm just using this um, Ultra Cover Clear, clear, and it's a gloss. Make sure it's a gloss if you want a good glossy paint job. And what we're going to do, just like before, is we're going to do a very small, light blast. And then we're going to let it dry before going back and doing more full coats. So let's let this dry for about five minutes and then we'll go back and hit it quite a bit harder. Okay, now that that coat's dried up, you can see that it's starting to get a little bit glossier. Um, it's still going to have, uh, we're going to do some more, another coat here. It's still going to be a little bumpy, a little orange peely until we get it wet sanded, but you can see that the gloss is definitely coming out. So again, we're going to do another coat. 
this time heavier than the light coat. And we're also going to uh, wait about 30 minutes to 45 minutes and then we'll do another uh, coat like this. And then we'll leave it to dry for about 24 hours um, before we start wet sanding. So let's cut to that. So now that the clear coats are dry, we're gonna wet sand it. We're gonna use 2000 grit. 2000 grit sandpaper, again, a little soap and water and we're just gonna gently uh, sand it. Now, don't be surprised, but what's gonna happen when you start to sand it is the thing's gonna haze over. You're gonna start to see a bunch of little scratches but that's okay because once that starts to, when we see those little scratches, it's gonna dull up the surface a little bit. But when that happens, we're gonna fix that when we get after it with um, the rubbing compound, the polishing compound. So we still have a few more steps even after this wet sand, but already you can see that it's, I mean, you can't see, but you can feel how much smoother it is as you do it. So we're just gonna keep sanding this. Um, you shouldn't see any color come off on the sandpaper like we were seeing before because we're sanding clear coat, so there shouldn't be any color in it. If you start to see color, it means you've sanded too far and you probably need to uh, go back and uh, re-clear coat. So, I'm just going to keep sanding. Now you can tell that it's gotten a little bit hazy from the wet sanding with that 2000 grit. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to polish it. This is a polishing compound, so it has a little bit of grit to it, very, very little. So the idea here is, is that it should brighten this up a little bit. I'm using the Meguiar's polishing compound. You can use just about anything. There's some that come in a liquid, there's some that come in a paste, there's rubbing compound, polishing compound. You should be able to do basically the same thing with all of it. Um, you can use this on an orbital buffer. I may end up doing that, we'll see. But right now I'm going to try to get started with just uh, doing it by hand because I don't know how thick that clear coat is, um, especially after the wet sanding. So I'm worried that uh, using the orbital buffer I might accidentally burn through the clear coat. Um, I don't think I would, but I'd rather see if I can do it by hand first. So we're just going to put a little bit of the polishing compound on our little our little rag, our little uh, polish applicator here. It's probably way more than I need. And then we're just going to start getting after it and just start rubbing away. Yeah, you can already see a difference. It's already starting to work its magic. So take your time. It's going to take a while, but uh, elbow grease and just keep rubbing. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but it is much, much shinier, much glossier. It's nice and smooth. It's got a mirror reflection. The camera doesn't seem to be showing up, but it's got a mirror reflection of the lights and the windows. So we've done a really good job with the can of, uh, with rattle cans. It's about a $20 paint job on this thing, um, all in. Um, as you can see on the underside, it's a very coarse, it's got that orange peel effect, and that's what we did um, before. I mean, that's the one that we didn't wet sand. So it's a much rougher surface underneath. It's still glossy, but you can see every imperfection in the paint application. Now, a couple of things before we finish this one up. Um, I talked about, and uh, the whole idea of these videos is for me to make the mistakes so you don't have to. Um, I'm gonna tell you the number one mistake I made while doing this was not elevating the fender. I was setting it on top of boxes or on top of this type of paper and what it ended up doing is it ended up losing paint on these edges here. You can see that. So, real, uh, real bummer there because the whole thing's going to have to be at least somewhat patched and then redone. The other piece is, uh, after going through this process, and I think it gave a great result, and I think this is fantastic for um, replacement parts if you can duplicolor. Um, so if you're replacing something, we can get an exact matching color and you can do this. I think it'll do a great job. I think the amount of effort to put in to actually do this, if we were to apply it to the entire scooter, I think it's going to um, 
Well, I think it would be extremely difficult. I think it would just take an extremely long time, and there's so many things that can go wrong because I don't have a paint booth. You know, this is open to the elements. I'm just doing this in my garage. Not open to the elements, but open to dust, bugs, my dog. So um, I'm seriously thinking that despite how well this worked, I may, uh, I, I'm seriously thinking about powder coating the thing. So, and that's been recommended by, uh, to me by a couple of people just because of the durability of the paint. But that's okay. For the time being, this will look great. It's going to look much better than the rest of the scooter. A um, couple of things that I'll suggest. Uh, first off, wax it. As soon as you're done, wax it to protect the paint and give it a little bit more luster as well. But make sure that you, uh, you wax it for protection. Um, if you do not know how to wax, there are probably plenty of videos. But um, you just wipe this stuff on, let it dry to a haze, and then buff it off with a, a lint-free cloth. So, pretty easy. Um, and then uh, I'm going to actually test fit it. So, with anything that you've just painted, make sure that you put some painter's tape or something on it so you don't scratch it up while you're trying to get it on there. Uh, especially around with this particular item, you know, the mounting points are, are real close to the fork and to um, the head on the scooter. You really don't want to uh, scratch this up and damage all your hard work right away. So um, let's take a look and see what it looks like test fitted. And that's how it looks fit in place. It's been waxed after I put it into place. I took off the painter's tape I used to protect it, gave it a quick spray down with Showtime, which is just like a spray on and wipe off cleaner. Works really well. Use it in car shows a lot. But as you can see, it fit really well. Now, it's obviously quite a bit different from the rest of the scooter, but all in due time. Now you may be asking, well, why put that on there if the, scooter, the rest of the scooter has that nice patina on it? Why have a brand new fender on there until, and why not just wait? Well, I wanted to make sure that uh, when I'm riding it that I like the color out in the sunlight because that's what the whole scooter is going to look like. So. Now it's time to go for a ride. And that's our finished fender. Please subscribe to uh, the Cushman Restoration Project so you can continue to see our progress.